All right, guys, and welcome back to Frugal Homestead. So today we're gonna take you through the July tiny house update. So we've had a lot of things going on, haven't been able to get a ton done, but it actually is moving forward and progressing quite fast. But I have a surprise for you. Notice something missing? So the kids ended up buying a house. So of course, congratulations to them, but they got rid of the RV that was here. So that is gone, makes the whole tiny house look a lot bigger, I think personally. Now, with that said, there's some things I want to discuss with you guys before we go into the complete update. So I've been getting some people in person and on social media asking me a lot of questions. And the questions make sense, but you have to have an understanding of what's going on. So if you were to go buy a house or want to go build a house, you would normally go check the area and make sure it's an area you want to live in, obviously. And then you would check like the schools and stuff like that. And then you would pick out the design of the house you want or go look at the house and see what kind of house you want that'll fit your size needs for your family. We are taking that thinking out and throwing it away. All right, because what you guys have to understand is we are looking at this like the settlers in the old Americas used to. They may have a 10 person family, but they didn't build 10 bedroom houses, all right? So the concept here is only two things that dictate this whole build. One is cost effective, that it costs a reasonable amount to build this. I have a budget I'm trying to bring this in, including the property cost, which was extremely low at $500 for this lot. But I'm trying to bring this in at a certain amount of money. Number two, efficiency. Now, when I say efficiency, a lot of people have completely different understanding of efficiency than what I do. The point is to be able to keep our utility bills low, to be able to keep our firewood usage low. That way, if something happens, these things are easy to deal with. Now, a lot of people don't even think about that when they buy their house. They may go look at a house and be like, that's a really cute house, it's big enough, it's in the right neighborhood. They don't go, how thick are the walls? How much insulation is in the attic? Most people don't do those things. And then they end up later regretting it because the one thing nobody ever said in all the years I've done construction is, I wish I would have put in less insulation or I wish my house had less insulation. It, it doesn't happen, nobody does that. So you will see as we go on with the update here, all the changes we're doing in our tiny house to make sure it's super efficient. Now, as far as cost basis, it is important to realize a lot of this stuff is either scratch and dent, second hand, donated. You know, I've had a lot of people help me out, like all the cornering was all donated. I mean, the metal is not number one metal. You know that's why we got it for $2 a sheet. So these are the things we're looking at in our house. It may not be the most beautiful thing in the world, but the fact is it's cost effective. It's reasonable enough to live in and be comfortable and we will have everything we need and be able to afford it and it all be paid off. Now with that said, let's continue on with the update so you guys can see all the strides we've made. So the first major thing is we have all the drip edge put in, the fascia metal got put on, and the corners got put on. Now these corners were all donated. All the edging material was donated. So I'm not gonna complain that they're not white or that the color they are. Now I am going to coat the roofs with a white silicone coating. So basically the whole house will be white with these blue gray trim on the edges now it's important to understand this carport was all bent up terribly so nothing straight i was furring this out to make it straight so that's an important note here perfection is not the key to doing this place you have to work with the walls the way they are bent and you'll see that more inside so as we head inside here downstairs has not seen a lot of change the only change is we started hanging some foam in here just around the outside walls it still all needs to be spray foamed in any seams against wood have to be caulked in 
Now, I will be cutting a dog door somewhere in here for the dogs to get out into the backyard. But overall, I feel like we're starting to make a little progress down here, even though this is not what we're focusing on right now. Now, as we head upstairs, this has been where I've been focusing most of my attention lately. And we have a bird inside. Don't worry, Mr. Bird, we'll get you out. All right, we'll get you out. So our friend just left the building. That was interesting. Okay. So now that we got our friend the bird out, I want to talk about the upstairs here. We have been putting the foam in, but I need to explain what's going on with the insulation here. So in order to make foam actually work correctly, all gaps need to be sealed. This has to be a solid surface from piece of wood to piece of wood or from foam to foam. So I will be spray foaming all these edges. If it's a tight fit like this, I'll silicone it, which is not optimal, but there's not enough room to get spray foam in there. Now that said, there's going to be another layer of insulation right here of R11 24 inch fiberglass insulation. Now, once that's in, that will give us two layers. Then we're gonna put a thermo barrier here. All right, and that's going to be some double bubble, thermofoil, you know, everybody has different names for it. But the basics of it are foam, R11 fiberglass insulation, then radiant barrier, and then drywall. That will give us a three layer system and will keep reflecting the heat and cold in and out. Now this is probably overkill, but like I said earlier, in all my years of construction, nobody ever said I wish I'd put less insulation in. Now one of the reasons why I'm going so overboard on insulation is because my wife has decided she wants an open floor plan now, which means I also have to heat and air condition the downstairs entryway by the door there. So. Probably what's going to happen is we're going to end up meeting a mini split in order to heat and air condition. Now we are putting a wood burner in. We actually are converting a DACA. There'll be a video coming where we convert a wood burning furnace into a regular wood burning furnace for off grid use that requires no power, but will have a massive burn time. Lots to do on that. But as you can see, with it all open, there's a lot more room. So we're just going to put a banister around the edge of the stairwell here and leave it open. So we have put in these purlins essentially, but they're actually ribs to catch the insulation. All right, so they're 22 and a half spaced, but I wanna talk about why we did them the way we did. The first thing is they're in between the rafters. Most people would be like, it would have been way faster if you just face nailed them on. If you just put them right there and nailed them on, it'd be so much faster and cut each one individually because all this is crooked. This was, this took some time. Now, while it's faster, it's not always more beneficial. Our rafters here are on five foot on center. That is a lot. This was not designed to be what it is. It was supposed to just be coverage for my backhoe I had at the time. Now on the outside, we do have purlin boards and then our metal goes on it. By doing this, we are giving strength in between the boards. And then when you put the drywall on, the theory behind that is that that will work as your inside lock. So you got three parts of holding to keep the rafters from twisting. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, anybody who's ever built a deck that has a freestanding handrail, if you put blocks in between the floor joists and then screw your handrail to it, it will have much less flex. It will move a lot less. So that is the reasoning of why we actually took the time to cut them in and put them in. It also saves us an inch and a half of headspace because I'm kind of tall. So that was an added benefit, but it was structurally done for strength. Now, the two end walls are gonna be a balloon framing just 
whatever it comes out at 22 and a half, wherever it comes out is what I'm gonna do. That's why I did the main area because these end walls are in and out and twisted. There's nothing straight on this place. You need to understand that. And we're okay with that. I mean, there's a prime example right here. This is gonna be fun to drywall. When you look at it from that point of view, these two posts are super crooked. That's what I showed you outside that I had to fur out to make it work. Now, that's okay. Because by the time you get drywall up, paint up, furniture in, you're not gonna know. It's not gonna matter. And it has nothing to do with the structural integrity or anything else. Now, I do wanna let you guys know that this lifestyle is not for everyone. But, I am interested to see what your main bullet points when you bought your house or found your property or what it was. Because I know some people will say, the only thing that mattered at the time was what I could afford. And I can understand that. Everybody's gotta start somewhere. You gotta do the best you can. It's kind of funny though that as we got more along in our relationship and we had this four bedroom house and all this stuff, all the kids grew up and moved out. And it made us think about how many people do that exact same thing. <clears throat> they work their way to the top, let's say, buy a three, four bedroom house, and the kids move out, and they either A, keep the house, and pay all the heating and cooling on that giant house, and those bedrooms never get used, or they downsize, just like we're doing, except later in life. <clears throat> it's a pretty interesting thing to think about when you really think about how as Americans, we spend our lifetimes and our money. But I feel like we're moving along. I have to go up and get the insulation. That's one of the things holding us up right now. I do have all the electric gear already here. We are gonna focus on doing the upstairs and getting it completed out to drywall. And once the drywall is all hung up here, I'll start working on the downstairs, the basics of the plumbing, which there isn't much and some other things. Now I do have to build an outbuilding for our rainwater catchment system. So that's gotta get done this year. I have a bunch of stuff for the gardens gotta get done this year, plus work on the other property. So it's gonna be busy, but I'm getting to the point now where I can put some lights up in here, like I've already started and work in the evening. Because this place is getting paid for, hey in the mouth. I'm going out and dashing, Missy's going out and dashing, and that's how we're paying for this place. This isn't some credit line from the bank. This isn't any of that. We are paying for this as we go. Now, I can tell you guys, you should keep watching this series because I'm keeping all the receipts. I know what this cost. And I don't think you're gonna believe me when I tell you at the end. But I can tell you that we are on budget. In fact, we are slightly under budget. The added insulation pushed us close. But as far as where we're at now, we're on budget. It's coming along. Everything seems to be going together the way it's supposed to without any major issues. And I will tell you that having that RV out of my way actually does make the work easier. And I'm glad that the kids were able to get them a house before interest rates went too much higher. Now that said, we are going to be doing all kinds of crazy things here soon. Make sure you're coming along with us. Join the family, be a part of everything that's going on here. Go down in the comments, let us know what you think, let us know what you you know look at your future as if this is something you could possibly do i'd love to hear from you i know we have some new subscribers that actually live in tiny homes or are building their own tiny homes and i think that's amazing look for them down in the comments to comment and go check their channels out as well but with that said if you haven't already and i don't know why you wouldn't have, go down hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell so you can see all of these updates Give us a like if you get a chance. It puts this video in front of more people's eyes, really helps us out. And with that said, we will see you in the next one because I've got a ton of work to do. I need to go buy some more material. <laughs>